Oh my God. Wonder Hussy here, out in the middle of nowhere. And when I say middle of nowhere, I really mean middle of nowhere. This is the desert of Utah, sort of, I guess you'd call it West Central Utah. Actually, I think they do call it the West Desert. And how do I know they call it the West Desert? Well, because of this thing that I drove out here to see. <laughs> it, well, it's just a big hole in the ground and it's called the West Desert Sinkhole. Okay, I'm not actually even sure what a sinkhole is or what causes it. I think it's just a big hole in the ground, essentially. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really planning on this being that interesting of a video. You know, I'll drive out, look at this big hole in the ground, maybe fly my drone, look at the big hole from overhead, look down in the hole, look around the hole. You know, it's not all that much you can do with a hole, so to speak. And to make matters worse, it's too windy for my drone anyway. So it really would have been a boring video if it weren't for the fact that, that there happened to be other people out here. And when I say we're in the middle of nowhere, like I said before, we're really in the middle of nowhere. The closest town is I don't know, like 50 miles away, I think. And there's no other little towns or anything out here at all. So I was really, well, frankly, surprised and disappointed to see two trucks parked here when I rolled up. Like, oh man, no, I'm not gonna be able to shoot a video. Well, no, it's actually super interesting. These people are testing a robot, a lunar robot for NASA. I'm not making this up. There's a little robot perched on the edge of the sinkhole there and it's got a camera on it. And I guess they're gonna drive it down into this crater like some kind of simulation for when they're on the moon. Okay, so these two guys are here with the robot crew uh, and they don't wanna be on camera, but uh, one of the guys very graciously agreed to describe what they're doing here. No pressure, just explain what you guys are doing here. So this is our prototype lunar rover. And the idea is that you could send a small lunar rover to the moon to drive to the edge of a crater and look down inside the crater in search of pits. Pits? Or in search of caves. So Caves for what? Toward what end? Yeah, so the idea is that on the moon you could establish a, a lunar colony inside of an enormous cave. Whoa! Um, mm -hmm. yeah, like mole people of the moon. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like a movie. Yeah, exactly. Are uh, you guys volunteering to go up there and be like among the No, not me. <laughs> not me. Sending the robot. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. Oh, these poor robots. So like yeah. the slaves of the future. Yep, that sounds but, very Blade Runner. Yep. But down inside of a, a moon cave, the radiation that would normally hit you on the moon's surface uh, isn't there, so it's a lot safer. Mm. So you can stay oh, a lot I see. Yeah, you're, prote you're protected. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And the temperatures are a lot nicer down underground. What do you so, mean by nicer? So on the surface at noon, it's something like 300 Fahrenheit. Oh gosh. And at midnight, it's something like uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures. It's very, very, very cold. Well, I'm a lay person. I don't it's, know what uh, liquid nitrogen temperature is. I don't know, is. negative 300 Fahrenheit or something. Oh golly. It's so what in the moon, cold. but in the moon cave, it's what? It's uh, about, I forget the exact number, but it's somewhere around zero. Oh, okay. So it's uh, survivable yeah. by humans. Yeah, it's something like zero Celsius. Yeah. But I mean, you'd still have to be wearing some kind of weird pressurized spacesuit, wouldn't Always. you? Yeah, There's yeah. There's no atmosphere. Yeah, no atmosphere. So yeah. Um, but the other, the other thing that's pretty cool about it is that the moon caves are all, a lot of them were formed by ancient volcanic activity on the moon. Oh. Or at least that's what we think. Oh, okay. Um, so you can look at kind of like the layers of lava that have accumulated over time and you can see the history of the moon. Oh. And if we could see all that stuff, it would help us learn a lot about how the moon was actually formed. Oh wow, far uh, out. Mm -hmm. And so you're out here at this particular sinkhole in the Utah desert because it just happens to be the well, right shape? Yeah, so this pit is approximately the right size for, uh, it, it compares well to the, the pits that have been found on the moon. Oh, okay. They're about this size and about this deep. If you go over there, this pit is really deep. Oh, is it? Okay. Do you know uh, like what natural phenomenon caused this sinkhole? Uh, yeah, the, well, I'm not a geologist, Okay. but as it's been explained to me, there was some kind of underwater, uh, underground um, movement of water okay. at some point, and it basically like washed out underneath the pit and left a void, and then that collapsed. You can see there's a smaller pit over here. Oh, uh, okay. So there's like a mini sinkhole. Yeah, and they were somehow connected. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a geologist. Okay, no, so that's fine. Listen, you know that. more about it than I do, and I appreciate the fact that you're here and willing to explain this stuff. Yeah. We, we all, I can speak for everybody watching, appreciate you. <laughs> well, oh, okay, nice shallow little sinkhole, but you're yeah. saying if I go to that other one. It's super deep. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. And this is all the, the uh, brush that we cut down to make this area look more like the moon. Oh, no. Oh, you had to come here and groom the landscape? Yeah, we've been landscaping. Boy, I hope they pay you well for this. It's <laughs> yeah. hot out here. You've been here all week, you said. Uh, yeah, something like that. Oh, well, I so. guess it's better than sitting in an office. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You nice get to meet weather. nice people like me. Yeah. yeah. You're the only one that's been out here so far. Uh, I'm the only one weird enough to be in a place like <laughs> no, this. No, it's cool. Here. Okay, I'm going to stay on this side of the robot because the okay. robot's not really Good. camera ready. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go peek over the edge. I won't get too close. Oh yeah, be very careful. I will. No, I don't want to fall into sinkholes. Nope. Okay. He says it's really deep. That's their boss over there. Got to be careful. Oh, don't want to make him mad. From this side, because our robot's looking over there, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to get in the robot's shot. Don't want to be on robot TV. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> Holy. You have to be real careful because it's undercut. So oh, I see. Yeah, it's like a little edge, crust. Yeah. Okay, so don't go any closer than he is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I need a longer selfie stick. Yeah. Holy cow, that is deep. That's well, that's not deep. the deep side either. Oh, well, what's the deep side? You go around to that side. So what if I go around behind the robot yeah, to that side? Cool. Can I do that? That's cool. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, I, I can't get this robot on camera because it's a prototype and it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as it will. But <laughs> we want to walk around behind the robot to the other side of the sinkhole here and I, they're saying there's a cave down here there it is. I can go a little bit further <laughs> can you just like hold on to the back of my pants or something yeah, oh there yeah, it is yeah look it. yeah that's the one that we want to capture you're gonna capture and that's like a sort that's of like where the, the astronauts would live that would be like an astronaut's moon cave kind of scary because this was a sinkhole. Okay, no, yeah, I'm getting back so away from the edge. Yeah. Wow, far out. This sinkhole is way deeper than I thought it was going to be. It's terrifying. <laughs> Have you had dreams about it? <laughs> no. Nightmares, <laughs> maybe. My <laughs> wife is mad. Oh, she wants to come we, out here? Well, uh, we've sent our pictures over the edge and she's like, get back. Get back. You what have you a family. Doing? Well, I mean, I have to say I understand her point of view. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, you guys never expected me to roll up, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, wow, far out. That is, without question, the most interesting thing I've ever stumbled on anywhere in the desert. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, when I rolled up, I saw two vehicles already out there. I went, oh man, it's some Jeepers. You know, whatever, it'll probably be nice people, but I wouldn't really be free to shoot a video. Those guys were super friendly. You could tell they were kind of nervous at first because they didn't want me to give away any of their secrets. But, you know, I respected what they asked me not to shoot the backside of the robot. And they asked me not to post this video till October because they're doing a big announcement in September. So you might have actually already have heard about this robot by the time you see this video. But anyway, they were just super cool guys. Uh, come to find out one of them worked for NASA. The other two were at uh, Carnegie Mellon University, which I guess has a big robotics research program. And wow, man, they were just full of interesting information. I wish I could have just let my camera roll the whole conversation, but well, I wouldn't have done that. I was trying to be respectful. Really cool guys. <laughs> I think in a weird way, maybe they were kind of glad that I rolled up because they seemed like they were kind of bored. It was hot. You know, the boss gets to sit in a chair, but the other two guys had to stand up. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but the boss, uh, the lead researcher, had the robot on a, a leash. Like he had it on a cord, just because this robot is supposedly smart enough. It has all these sensors and it's making all these calculations every second as it rolls up to the edge of the crater and it's taking pictures to build this 3D model of the crater. And when it gets as far as it can to the edge, it somehow calculates when it's gonna reach the precise tipping point and it stops just before that. But these guys had all this money and time into the research and building of this prototype and they didn't want to accidentally lose it. So they had it on a, it wasn't even a leash, it was just like a long paracord. And he was holding it and like feeding it out and pulling it back. Like he was, it's like he was walking a dog. Amazing, really a fun thing to have happened upon. And well, now if I see this little, I can't remember what they even called it lunar crater rover thingy if i ever do see that in the news myself well i'll remember that i saw it here first and by here i mean the fabulous middle of nowhere where everything is happening